Okay, I now call the chairman of the membership committee, Mr. Carlos Real Cervantes, aka Caloy, to formally introduce the new members. Good afternoon. We will now induct the following new members. I shall call them the name, state the company, position, company, and sponsors. Number one, we have actually eight uh, new members, but uh, two called in six, so we'll have six today. Number one would be John Maynard G. Atutubo. Could you come over, please, and uh, stay in front? Senior partner of Puno and Puno Law Office, sponsored by uh, Jose Luis Gomez. Number two, Deborah S. Acosta Cajustin, partner, Puno and Puno Law Offices, sponsored by Jose Luis Gomez. We also have Jose Eduardo S. De Rivera, head of uh, origination and EVP of PNB Capital and Investment. Sponsored by Jerry Valenciano. We have Aldi P. Garcia, Assurance Managing Partner, East Lalipana and Company. Um, sponsored by Wilson Pitan. We have Renulfo Gerardo V. Payos Jr., Senior Partner of Puno and Puno Law Offices. Uh, sponsored by Jose Luis Gomez. Finally, we have Jonathan P. Serrano, Senior Partner, Puno and Puno Law Offices. Sponsored by Jose Luis Gomez. So to add solemnity to the occasion, may I request all members, please, on site to stand and to open, um, and may I call on our president, President Wilson P. Tan, for their oath of membership. Thank you. He, uh, I request everyone to stand. Okay. Please follow after me. Raise your right hand. <laughs> I state your name. Having been accepted as a member of the National Security Institute of the Philippines. Do hereby solemnly swear that I will faithfully to the best of my ability, my duties and duties in the pursuit of its goals and objectives that I will protect and uphold the Constitution and bylaws, that I will abide by its codes of code of ethics, that I will observe the highest professional, moral, and ethical standards, and that I voluntarily impose this obligation upon myself without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, President Wilson, and congratulations and welcome to our new members. Uh, to our main event, uh, I'd like to call on uh, Koloi once again to introduce our speakers. We have our first speaker for today. We have attorney Felix William Bookwit Fentebelia, or Wimpy, who holds the position of undersecretary of the Department of Energy. He first held this position from September 2016 to 2022 under the secretary, then secretary of energy, Alfonso Cusi. He was then reappointed under current energy secretary Rafael Lotelia last September 2022. Uh, presently, he is the undersecretary in charge of the following bureaus and units, Marami. Energy Policy and Planning, Energy Utilization and Management Bureau, Administrative Services, Information Technology and Management Services, 
Investment Promotions Office, Consumer Welfare and Promotions, Internal Audit Division, Public Affairs Office. Wimpy earned his Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration in 1997 from the UP and started his Bachelor of Laws in the Ateneo Law School and completed it in San Sebastian College Recoletos Institute of Laws. He was admitted to the Philippine Bar in 2009. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Wimpy Fuente Bellia. You sec. So, maraming salamat. Uh, very energetic yung simula pala ng presentation yun, nag bat yung laptop. Tapos, during the oath-taking, bumibigay yung mic. So, that's a signal that you have guests from the Department of Energy. Now, since I cannot make it to your... Uh, ayun na, low bat na ba? Since I cannot make it to your Q&A, we will start the Q&A right now. So I will first ask the question, who are you, who, who in this room were born before 1975? Please raise your hands. Yeah, please, higher. Be proud, Ninong. <laughs> okay, so around half of the room, right? Um. <clears throat> We, we started this way because uh, today is the birthday of Scout Fuentebella, my Ninong in uh, Baptism C, Ninong Artuason, Ninong Kopusha. Um, reminded me of the significance of today. But we emphasize it because in the 70s, we have already been targeting energy independence. And we don't want you to get lost in the electric vehicle. Oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll allow you to take pictures later. Intro pa lang. We have been trying to pursue this during the time of Marcos Sr. when we were experiencing a lot of issues that are beyond the control in the national level kasi international siya. So, Second question is, who of you are aware of the Philippine Energy Plan? Please raise your hands. Okay. Okay. So, kung kanina kalahati, <laughs> kalahati experience, this one is around 5% of the room. The Philippine Energy Plan is that plan that is being controlled by the Department of Energy. The DOE does not operate power plants, does not operate yung mga manufacturing um, ng electric vehicles, for example. Wala. It's more of providing these plants. And I don't want you to get confused with or get lost in the forest when we start tackling the comprehensive roadmap for electric vehicle industry. <clears throat> so the PEP has this formula. Um, lima lang siya. Okay? Limang major items. So, so the baseline is the BAU. Then the first of the five is you add energy efficiency and conservation. So before the pandemic, Congress was able to pass the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act, which is 29 years pending in Congress. So, Director Patrick, who is with me, is probably like six years old <laughs> when the electric, uh, four years old, when the EEC Act was first proposed in Congress. So when he was director, that was the time it was passed. So that's the first thing that we do in our march towards the clean energy scenario in the Philippine Energy Plan. The second is we plug in the RE. 
It is very important because when we strategize our finance plans, it starts with energy efficiency and conservation. So yung pagpapalit ng bumbilya, pagbili ng appliance na energy efficient, yun yung dapat unang ginagawa. Bago natin ipasok yung RE, kasi titingnan muna natin yung load profile ng opisina ng demand or ng factory or whatever it is that you are planning for. So when you have the best behavior and the best appliances already, that's when you plug in the RE. Because the renewable energy has certain benefits and meron din siyang limitations. Okay. So if your office is running on a graveyard shift, dun siya maraming mag-consume, I don't think you will provide in your plan a solar panel on your roof. Right? Kasi hindi nyo siya ginagamit during that time. So these are the things that should be there. So it's EE plus RE. And then the next one is where electric vehicles come in. It's the other energy technologies, which includes, which includes energy storage systems. It includes ammonia, hydrogen. It includes the other emerging technologies. The fourth is the introduction or the synergy with the information communication technology. Like when I say, Alexa, turn off the lights, lights will turn off. So it's the IT, the ICT, the communication technology, information communication technology that is synergized with all those strategies. And then lastly, we add resiliency. So please be reminded that the first question is the 70s and the second question is the PEP. These are your mga North Star or mga guide so that you won't get lost. Okay? So, <clears throat> ba't nandiyan na siya? May sarili siyang buhay. Okay. So, nandiyan pa lang ako. <laughs> so, this is a living document, the CREVI. That's what I want to emphasize. And when we show our numbers, this is where we are right now. So 1% of the total registered motor vehicles are EVs. I have an electric scooter in the office. Yung nakatayo. Uh, it should be registered, but it's not registered. Okay? So that's where we are. There are eight models of e-trikes. Six are locally made and two are imported. What's the difficulty of tricycles? Yung LTO nila nasa LGU. There are 15 electric cars. <laughs> Sedans, sports utilities vehicles. Seven battery electric vehicle, eight plug-in. So that's where we are. Sa atin, how I came here, nagmotor po ako. So, I just have that case on the right and on the left where I put the jacket, patong yung helmet. Then I come here. Then I have to rush to Camp Aguinaldo after this. So this is the data for the charging stations. Can I have a question? Kasi nakita ko yung puno in puno. May joke ako mamaya. Huwag niyong remind niyo ako ha. Nakita ko yung puno in puno kasi yung mga nagsaswear in. Eric was... Eric Puno was always was a mainstay in the house before. I think they were lobbying for a certain law called the Electric Power Industry Reform Act with my dad. 
But anyway, <coughs> so, bilis. Sino po dito ang in a way connected sa MVP group? Can you raise your hands? Naging kliyente, MVP group, connected. One. Thank you, ma'am. Paliit ng paliit. Kasi I had a conversation with Attorney Winston of the Felix Mining. Yeah. Si Director Patrick and I had a conversation that we have to put where the mining resources are in the Krevi so that you will be guided again. That's like a clue sa mga plano ng DOE kung saan tutungo pa paano natin ilo-launch yung manufacturing sa Pilipinas. Kasi ang kwentuhan namin ni Presidente sa Japan, si pagkakwentuhan mo yung Presidente, hindi pwedeng matagal. Kumbaga sentences lang. Sabi ko, Singapore told us that they have identified the Philippines to be the source of the minerals to support the energy transition. But in a nutshell, it's like this. Si BBM na po yung kausap namin. Oh, kausap po, bulungan lang. Ganito yung sitwasyon. Halimbawa sa MVP Group, meron silang mining company. Ine-export niya yung raw material niya abroad. Tapos, bibilhin siya ni PLDT at ni Meralco, finished wires. Sana nakuha ng CFO yung para naging CFO of the year siya. Kung <laughs> so, ganun tayo. And uh, Singapore told Secretary Lotilia that that is the significance of the Philippines in the regional plan to transition because we are part of this region that has the highest growth rate in the world. <coughs> so, yan ang importance ng strategy sa manufacturing. And then, we have a strategy for the <coughs> demand. How do we increase domestic demand. There is this tool under the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act where you have the interagency EEC committee haba ng pangalan IAEECC <laughs> nagpapasa siya ng resolution kung paano si government magsa-strategize or ano yung quota ni government para maabot niya yung 100% electric vehicle target by 2040 if we adopt that very ambitious clean energy scenario. So yung demand generation niya, meron tayong iba't ibang strategy. Nasaan na ba ako? May sarili siya eh. <laughs> okay. So these are the required actions for the responsible stakeholders. Kasi kanina nagre-reklamo si Tony Boy. Bakit delayed ang electric vehicle? <laughs> Mali ka dun. Sobrang delayed. <laughs> so, <laughs> kasi ganito siya. <laughs> Kasi tayo naman nasa finance tayo, di ba? Ang ganda mag-window shopping. Hakot ka ng hakot ng bibilhin, lalo na pagkasama mo si ma'am, si misis. Pagdating mo sa cashier, yon ang reality check. Di ba may bigla kang isusoli? Meron na pala ako nito. Pabalik mo na, di ba? Para di ka mapahiya. Meron na ako nito. Meron na ako ibang kulay pala nito. Balik ng balik. Kasi mahal. Mahal mag-transition. So, paris-paris siya kasi hindi pwedeng mag-electric vehicle tayo na wala tayong transition sa power. Sa power, 
may kota at may kulong. Oh, <laughs> meron kasi hindi naman naniniwala yung Pilipino sa fines. I'd rather pay the fine. Di ba? Yun yung ugali. E eh, dito may kulong. So, anong kulong? May kota kasi ang bawat isa sa atin, dati 1% yan na dapat bumili ka ng RE. Ngayon, naging 2.52%. So, ginapa ngayon ng DOE habang nagmahal yung coal tsaka yung yung alin, gasolina. <laughs> nagmahal, di ba? So, napasok yung 2.52. But, yung magkakomply for you, hindi kayo. Kasi you're busy computing, you're busy with whatever it is that you're doing in the office. So, ang kinocompute natin, ang taga-comply doon at ikukulong kung hindi makapag-comply, are the distribution utilities, the retail electricity suppliers, and the directly connected customers. But the, in essence, the principal is each one of ha us has that quota. That's a renewable portfolio standard. And that formula will, will bring us to 2030, 35% RE, and 50% by 2040. So, sino makukulong? GM or CEO? And the board. Sabi sa akin, I'm the independent board. Kanina, nagsasalita sa video. Kasama siya sa makukulong kung hindi sila mag-comply. So, then you have the electric vehicles. Right? So, ngayon, sa pag-deploy mo sa kanya, hindi pwedeng puro pera. Kailangan, meron tayong non-fiscal incentives. Like what? We create a community here where si um, electric vehicle will have a chip and they will be seen in a map like in ways, ito yung mga wazers, ito yung mga EVs and then dun sa community na yun makikita mo, nasa yung charging stations and then like thank you siya mag-isa huwag na nga to okay na yan, kayo, kayo nalang mag-control <laughs> magkwenta na lang ako so, I'll just share you, with you yung pinipare namin yung staff. Pero the important thing there is, meron tayong green routes, meron tayong community because we are creating a new nature, a new community. Now, the prices have gone down. Yung ibang 2.9 million, naging 1 million, ay, 1.8 na lang, 1.9. Because of the incentives that was given. <laughs> But there are three tiers of incentives. Pag pumasok tayo sa R&D, and mas malayo tayo sa mga metropolis, mas malaki yung incentive. So these are the strategies that we should look at together with the mining and together with the upskilling. Because in the transition, they need globally, we need workers. And these workers... Especially kung magtatayo tayo ng left and right ng offshore wind, which is 178 gigawatt potential sa Pilipinas. Meaning, ubusin mo na gamitin mo yung kuryente mo. Time 7 yan, yun ang potential natin sa offshore wind para hindi tayo masyadong um, ha, uh, stressed na makipag-away sa West Philippine Sea because we have offshore wind. Kaya lang sa offshore wind, kung meron tayong developer niyan, para tayong merong anak na may project sa bahay na itatabi lahat ng upuan at dining table kasi kailangan niya ng space for the project sa school. And ganyan kalaki yung ports na kailangan nating i-build for our offshore wind. We need big roads we need big port landing areas. We need high-tech equipment. We need very big boats and vessels. And we need skilled workers whom we need to feed as well while putting up these big electric fans there sa tabi ng dagat. Mostly in the north, in the west. 
the sun with science Mindanao. <laughs> so the last question is kung may marites which means mare what's the latest kung lalaki ka toilets ka which is tol what's the latest pag ang chismis tungkol sa abogado ano tawag doon mare Tony very good <laughs> mare anong latest kay attorney inong naalala ko nakita ko yung mga puno in puno <laughs> So, anyway. <laughs> but don't worry, cheers to the lawyers. And I, I heard that ethics is very important. So, um, I guess that's it. Um, we have a new pandemic baby. It's called the uh, EVIDA, Electric Vehicle Industry Development Act. And the CREVI was launched this April 2023. So the CREVI is part of that formula in the PEP. It's part of that <coughs> formula that we encountered. This is, that formula is a way to answer the crisis that we encountered in the 70s. And please remember, <coughs> The questions that I asked, the PEP, <coughs> the 70s, the MVP group, forget the lawyer thing. Because these are very important clues for you to come up with a very good financial plan for the country. And when I was looking for, last and long, when I was looking for an inspiration on how we will, how I will make sure that you, will remember kung ano yung direction ng Philippines is. I guess the question is, name a country that has that concept of renewable energy in the lyrics of its national anthem. And one of it is the Philippines. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, he has to go to another meeting, but uh, his director is here to, to take on the question and answer portion. Our next speaker is attorney Reese Alexei Y. Murillo. He is a CPA lawyer who completed his Bachelor of Science in Accountancy degree from the La Salle University Taft in 2002, and his Juris Doctor degree from Ateneo Law School in 2006. He passed the bar in 2006 and has since been exposed to various industries, having worked as part of the legal departments of local and multinational companies. Uh, Rees is the general manager in compliance and legal affairs of Nissan Philippines Incorporated. As part of his personal advocacies, attorney Murillo is working with electrification advocates, EVAP, and the DOE to push for electric, electrified, electrified mobility in the Philippines and promote the adoption of EV technologies by the Filipinos. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Attorney Reese Murillo. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope I can be as entertaining and educational as you, Sequimpi. So I have the unenviable task of talking to you while you, just after you've ate. So I hope you're still awake. So yes, good afternoon. My name is Reese Murillo. I am from the Chamber of Automotive Manufacturers of the Philippines. But before I give you my presentation, allow me to give you a very short message. Well, I'm hoping it's short about electrification. So. Um, to the Honorable Yusek Wimby Fantabella, Phoenix President Mr. Will Santan, members and officers of Phoenix, and to all guests, a very pleasant afternoon. So on behalf of the Chamber of Automotive Manufacturers of the Philippines and its President, Attorney Romel Gutierrez, 
I hope you can spare a few minutes of your time today for me to talk about something that I'm very passionate about, and that is electrification. Electrification itself is shaping the way we see the world, the way we travel, and even the way we move persons and goods across the Philippines. So the electrification of our society is an essential step towards a sustainable and prosperous future. It holds the potential to revolutionize the way we live, work, and interact with our environment and each other. The benefits that electrification brings are numerous and are far-reaching, making it pivotal solution to many of the challenges we face today. So first and foremost, electrification offers us the opportunity to combat climate change and reduce our carbon footprint by embracing electrification in various sectors such as transportation and energy production, we can mitigate the harmful effects of climate change and create a cleaner and healthier planet for future generations. Furthermore, electrification plays a crucial role in advancing transportation. EVs are now emerging as viable options as you've seen on the roads, whether it's fully electric, plug-in hybrid, or electric vehicles. EVs have a lower operating costs they reduce dependence on carbon and finite fossil fuels and provide quieter and smoother rides. EVs also revolutionize the way we use our cars and move goods and people all across the Philippines. Electrification has the potential to enhance the quality of life for people around the world and also the Filipino people. Access to electricity is something that is a fundamental human right, but millions of people still lack reliable power sources. By utilizing existing technologies and maximizing electrification efforts uh, for those underserved communities or those ravaged by typhoons and other natural calamities, we can bridge the gap between um, energy and enable access to education, healthcare, and economic opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, for me personally, electrification is not just a complex concept or a dream. It is actually a catalyst for positive change. For me, it, is, it offers all of us a chance to address climate change. It improves air quality, advanced transportation, it transforms energy systems, enhances the quality of life, and, simul and stimulates economic growth. It requires collective efforts and collaborative efforts between governments businesses and individuals such as yourselves together let us embrace electrification as a transformative force that will shape a better future for generations to come by harnessing the power of electricity we can build a sustainable and prosperous world where innovation progress and environmental stewardship go in hand so with that short message now please allow me to start my presentation again i promise it will be short so to introduce the Chamber of Automotive Manufacturers of the Philippines is a association of automotive brands totaling a number of 24 member companies representing 29 global brands. So you see there Honda, Isuzu, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Toyota, Mahindra, Colombian Manufacturing Corp, Photon, and all other brands uh, who are members. So we represent about 80 to 90 percent of the total industry volume in the Philippines. Our electrified vehicle strategy is to promote electrification through a range of EV technologies. So all our EV technologies have the potential for fuel consumption reduction and carbon dioxide emission mitigation. So you will see we have either a hybrid electric vehicle, a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, or a battery electric vehicle models in our lineup. We also want to provide diverse uh, choices for the customers, allowing the customers to personally select cleaner and greener mobility options or mobility or mobility vehicles, electrified mobility, that are suitable for their economic circumstances as well as their environment. In terms of our EV lineup, as I showed you earlier, we do have a range of hybrids, um, plug-in hybrids, as well as battery electric vehicles. We have about 23 to 24 hybrid electric vehicles, about four plug-in hybrid electrics, and um, about seven to eight uh, battery electric vehicles. In terms of how the brands or how the OEMs promote electrification in the Philippines, we initiated several programs in terms of customer education. We have been uh, going on roadshows with the government as well as doing our own uh, 
OEM initiated uh, initiatives and activities where we provide a platform to showcase EVs through its uh, motor show. We have our Campi Motor Show, the Philippine Motor Show, which is held every two years. We just had one uh, last year. We have been displaying the EVs in our Philippine International Motor Show since 2010, and we and each of the OEMs like Toyota, Nissan, and Mitsubishi have, init have initiated our own activities, such as the Blue Switch for Nissan, uh, Toyota Hybrid Electric Vehicle Technology Conference for Toyota, and for Mitsubishi, they have their V2H Ecosystem Showcase in 2022. In terms of the key policy developments, as I mentioned earlier, this is not possible without collaboration between the government, businesses, and individuals. So we are very thankful to the Philippine government for recent policy measures, which allow for the adoption, as well as clearly demonstrating the government's policy in terms of EV. So in 2017, we had the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion Act which was effective in 2018, which allowed for a 0% excise tax for BEVs, as well as a 50% reduction on excise tax for um, plug-in hybrids, as well as hybrid electric vehicles. In 2021, the government released the CREATE law, or the Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentive for Enterprise Act, which provides for fiscal incentives for the production of EV and EV components. In 2022, we had the EVIDA, or the Electric Vehicle Industry Development Act, which is essentially the Philippines' comprehensive national policy on EV industry development, which provides for some fiscal and non-fiscal incentives, not just for the businesses, but also for end users of EV. And in 2023, we have the Executive Order Number no. 12, issued by our president, which allowed for the reduction of tariffs for uh, battery electric vehicles for five years. Uh, we are also working with the Department of Energy in terms of the CREVI or the Comprehensive Roadmap for the Electric Vehicle Industry, uh, which allows us to target certain sectors for the introduction of EV in the Philippines. So I think you saw earlier um, with USEC Wimpy, yung kanyang runaway presentation. <laughs> there were figures there about the CREVI. So just to give you a, also a short uh, overview of the CREVI. Uh, for short-term targets, um, the government is looking at approximately about 300,000 EVs um, in the Philippines by 2023 to 2028, which we are uh, very willing to support. In 2029 to 2034, which are the midterm targets, they're looking at increasing EVs to about 500,000 and also um, asking businesses to install electric vehicle charging stations of approximately 14,000 all the way up to 800,000 EVs in 2035 to 2040. So, but before we start with our targets, where are we now? So currently, um, also, USEC Wimpy showed a figure on where we are now in terms of electric vehicles. Based on the data that was submitted by our members, the penetration of EVs in the Philippines currently remain low. It's still a single digit percentage versus um, ICE or conventional engines. But uh, we do see a sh uh, improvement in the adoption by the Filipinos. The trend shows that HEV or hybrid electric vehicles are the ones that has higher adoption. This is really because um, we do have what we call range anxiety. Filipinos still think that they will not reach the end of their journey without a charging stations. So um, some of our um, brands have implemented technologies which allow for adoption of EVs uh, with the range anxiety in mind. So there's also the factor of cost. Electric vehicles still cost a bit more than your conventional vehicles, but thankfully because of EO12 and other fiscal incentives given by the government, we were able to lower down the price. As mentioned by USEC Wimpy, one of our members initially had a fully electric battery vehicle at 2.9 or 2.8 Philippine pesos, million pesos, but now it's gone down to 1.8. So with all of those fiscal incentives, we see a rising trend of adoption in the Philippines. And also because of the traffic as well as the rising prices of gasoline, Filipinos are tend to shift more to EVs now. So what are our key challenges uh, in terms of EV adoption in the Philippines? So the first one is market acceptance. 
uh, as I mentioned earlier, Filipinos still feel range anxiety. They still feel that the technology is fairly new. It's not yet, uh, it's not yet dependable. What if it rains? Paano pag bumaha? Like in the past couple of weeks and days, we've seen, um, lalo na in the south, if you live in the south, I'm from Laguna. So, sa Bikutan area, pag umulan ng konti doon, parang swimming pool na. Sa SLEX, ganun din. So, yun yung fear nila. What if bahain yung EV ko? What will happen? So, that's the thing that we are focusing now as an OEM is to educate the consumers in terms of how to take care and how to utilize your EV. The second uh, key challenge is infrastructure. As we all know, there are not yet a lot of electric vehicle charging stations all across the Philippines, although there is an increasing number um, of uh, vehicle charging stations being installed. The third is energy source. We are looking at grid sustainability as well as decarbonization of the energy system. So this is one of the things that Yusek Wimpy was talking earlier. And the last is end-of-life battery management. Of course, we now have EVs. We also have batteries. We need to make sure that there is an environmentally sound practice of either repurposing the battery or um, promoting the second life cycle use. Hindi naman pwede na mag-import lang kami na mag-import ng battery tapos pupunta lang sa landfill yung battery after it uh, degrades. So what are our opportunities, or the, not just the industry, but the Philippines as a whole? Um, we need to make sure that the convergence of mobile technology solutions and, e e and there is convergence between those technology solutions as well as EVs. So for multi-sector business opportunities, we're looking at manufacturing. There is maybe an in there will be an increasing demand for EV parts, components, as well as systems. We're looking at um, an opportunity in terms of transportation, as well as electrification of uh, public utility vehicles, logistics, and distribution channels. I think some of our members are exploring bringing in um, battery electric or even plug-in or hybrid for trucks for delivery trucks, like for example, it can be used by LBC, DHL, for um, Lazada, Shopee. Um, another opportunity we're looking at is non-traditional automotive players. So we're looking at partnering with different technology advocates or different technology companies for mobility service providers. Some of our members are actually offering already concierge services. So there's also car connected service where in case of emergency, you just push a button on your car and the nearest um, hospital or the nearest police station is called to assist you during an emergency. Also, we're looking at um, infrastructure in terms of renewable energy. Um, it, we do have a finite amount of fossil fuel, so we need to make sure that uh, we are shifting to a more sustainable and renewable source of energy. And lastly, as I mentioned, we want to expand not just on private vehicles, but also commercial vehicles in terms of EV. So in summary, uh, as I mentioned, um, we as a brand and as an association, we are slowly gaining ground in the adoption of EVs in the Philippine market, particularly for battery electrics. Uh, existing and future challenges affect its deployment rate and sustainability, which is why we are working hard with the government to try to maximize our resources as well as remove roadblocks to adoption. The Evida and the Crevi laws are good frameworks. It allows us um, the opportunity to lower our costs and uh, make it more attractive for Filipino customers to purchase and adopt uh, electrified mobility. For the brands, we recognize that there is, a, there is opportunities in multi-sectoral uh, partnerships including transport electrification offers. So we will be collaborating with EV stakeholders to develop the market and address potential critical bottlenecks. And lastly, uh, with supportive policies in place and effective implementation, we believe that our CAMPI believes that the brands can significantly contribute towards achieving Philippine electrification goals. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Attorney Marilio. Now I will turn you over to uh, Mr. Antonio Ramon Onxiaco for the Q&A. Antonio Boy is a, uh, a FinEx director. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, please forgive me. 
my uh, doctor has uh, diagnosed that I have laryngitis uh, because he said I talk too much and I sing out of tune. So uh, this is the first time I'm using really my voice in the past two days. So when I invite the uh, attorney uh, to please come up and join us here and, and Director Patrick Aquino. <clears throat> attorney uh, Patrick Aquino is currently Director of the Energy Utilization Management Bureau under the DOE. A career executive service officer, round three, he rose from the ranks and has served in various capacities in the DOE from the office of the secretary. Recognizing the need for sustainable energy consumption, Director Aquino, with the support of the DOE, is aggressively implementing the energy efficiency and conservation and the electric vehicle industry development. He is going to take the place of Under Secretary Alfonso Pelea, who has to another prior engagement. Okay, to get the ball rolling, can I ask uh, Attorney um, Aquino here, Director Aquino, why the DOE, this vehicle uh, should really be under the DOR? Why was it given to the DOE? That's a, it's a very good question, sir. Um, I think the answer there, the law was passed in the previous uh, administration. It actually laps into law. We were afraid that it will get vetoed, notwithstanding the lack of incentives. Well, the incentives that businessmen or the CFOs would need is clearly absent here in this version. That's why we've been trying to be creative in incentivizing the use. Um, but I'll answer the question. I think at the time, um, there were some concerns as to the speed by which the transportation department uh, was implementing its programs. There were concerns. Uh, since the majority requirements of an electric vehicle transition is the electricity itself, uh, the DOE was tasked to actually take on that function. That's the diplomatic way of saying it. Uh, we did not ask for the function, uh, but we are working hard to, to get it done. Okay. Thank you very much, Director uh, Kino. Can I ask uh, uh, Rhys, uh, what is the difference between a hybrid vehicle, plug-in hybrid, and electric vehicle? Yes, so in terms of, uh, without getting too technical about it, uh, a battery electric vehicle is um, an electric vehicle where the propulsion is through an electric engine and uh, the one that powers the electric engine is a battery. A plug-in hybrid electric vehicle means that a vehicle is propelled either by a combustion engine, which is a gasoline engine, and an electric engine powered by a battery. The reason why it's called plug-in is because you plug it in to charge your battery. Now, a hybrid electric vehicle could mean that propulsion is done either through the combustion engine or a battery electric engine, but you can either plug it in or it is charged uh, in another manner. So I hope that clarifies it. Thank you very much. Can I ask you again? Are you, uh, and also the DOE, are you also working for real estate developers? In uh, because you know when I was uh, when I used to be a developer way back in 2010, the Canadian, uh, the British Columbia provincial government required all developers of multi uh, 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 condominiums or apartment complexes to install uh, ways that they can charge hybrid vehicle became a requirement. So I'm asking both of you, are you working with real estate developers to, uh, to achieve this? Because like, when I wanted to buy an electric vehicle, my 
have like his face, and like other men have been there. There's no way I can block him like a big guy. So I ended up buying a hybrid vehicle. So I only got for two months. Very happy. Anyway, can you can you answer? The answer is there's a provision in Evida that actually requires that parking spaces, government buildings, facilities, even private, install or make available um, electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Uh, that's it. One. Two, there's also a mandate. I'll have to flag it because it was shown in the figures. Um, the businesses that you're operating by 2030, there will be a strict requirement for you to start purchasing pure battery electric vehicles as well. Uh, those are provisions indicated in Evida. Uh, it stated it's 5%, uh, but in the CREVI, we increased it to 10%. The bulk of the na electric vehicles that's in the CREVI for the short term, we're looking at two-wheelers. Hence, the pronouncements being made by the other government agencies that were working with the Tariff Commission to include two- and three-wheelers in the import tariff suspension. Because effectively, uh, if your vehicle, well, for majority of Kampinaman galing sa ASEAN, eh, the reason why you see the, you're seeing the price reduction is that it's based on the country of origin. If the country of origin is in ASEAN, Southeast Asia, 0% na yung import tariff. But if it comes from countries like Japan, China, South Korea, the tariffs could range anywhere from 5 to 30%. That's why you're seeing the substantial reduction in the prices. But the other thing that we'd like to listen, and we'll be doing some consultations on this, is exactly on the mandate. Because it will, af it will affect your bottom line. There are costs associated with it. And unfortunately, there is nothing that we can do straightforward to give you those incentives. So we're working, we're taking it baby steps, I always use that word because we do want to offer you with a compliance pathway. The DOE and other government agencies will be implementing EVIDA in a manner kasi meron po itong penal provisions eh. So ibig sabihin, if you do not comply, you get fines, penalties, and possibly may kulong. And unlike in RE, that it's your chief executive officer lang or director, Dito, wala pong nakalagay na ganun. So, we're working hard. And just on the final point on the charging infrastructure, um, for vertical developments, uh, kung mayroong mga tiga-residential property developers here, when you do the selling of a condo, you buy a particular parking slot. That's why we are taking it very carefully because the infrastructure, what is it will be coming out is that hindi na ano dapat doon sa spot mo magka mo ng charging kasi meron pong issue yun kung yung nabili mong king slot malayo doon sa tipping point ng kuryente sinong magsusult ng cost meron pong ibang mga concerns pa na ganun so we're trying to sit down with our property developers building administrators in a manner that we can implement the provision without burdening you or also the end user. Kaya po mabagal. At hindi po namin ilalabas yun kung hindi po maliwanag ang paraan para makakomply kayo. Pero magpo-promote lang ako ng konti. Um, yun po sa mga kakumpanya na meron po kayong mga fleet, yun po yung initial na tatamaan ng requirement for EV you may wish to explore something that uh, Yusek Wimpy already said. It is qualified as an energy efficiency project. And if it is an energy efficiency project, hindi nga lang po ownership yon. may ibang vehicle kayong gagamitin. You can enjoy the income tax holiday, the tax and duty-free importation. And I can vouch that there has been at least one approval uh, of this concept by the Board of Investments. So that's something that you may wish to explore. It's contained in our DC, kasi may mga abogado, sasabihin ko na, Department Cir DOE Department Circular 2022-03-004. 
yun po yung best naming maibibigay at this point in time that you can get your income tax holiday, you can get your uh, tax and duty-free importation even on the vehicle. So you may want to explore that, sit down with your legal team and your finance person. And i-highlight ko lang po, ang cost to operate is cheaper by at least 50%. To do the numbers, that's 20 pesos per kilowatt hour is equivalent to 40 pesos per liter yung sinasabi ko pong savings. So you tweak within that range, cost advantage po to operate a ko, pure battery electric vehicle. So if you do the numbers, it makes sense. Ang challenge lang po natin talaga is the upfront cost. Eh. Thank you. Yes. So for, for OEMs naman, for, for the private companies, uh, what we're trying to do now is to disseminate technical information relating to our electric vehicles. For the brands kasi, um, we understand that we use different charging um, protocols as well. So it's not as easy as putting an adapter to your charger. Um, the box, the charging station also needs to be able to uh, supply the necessary current also uh, regulate the current itself so hindi madadamage yung electric vehicle. So what we do now is we train our service providers in terms of the technology. So in case, like for example, SM already has a lot of charging stations within their different malls. So we work with SM to understand um, how they build their electric, uh, electric vehicle charging stations and how we can include our units or our vehicles to charge in those areas. Thank you very much. Please take note, uh, SM has vehicle charging stations. Ang Ayala, may may I confirm ko po, ang Ayala, I have to say, I have to be balanced kasi baka sabihin, ano, favorite SM kami nag ano, uh, SM has the widest number of charging stations for retailers right now. Uh, but Ayala also has a quite a number of malls, including Robinsons, Rockwell Land, just to name a few. And Mega, sorry, Mega World, baka mapaaway ako eh. Ang hindi ko nilang po nabanggit atang property developer, um, letter V. At saka yung starts with the letter C. But the other rest, they've deployed na po na charging station. Thank you. Now, is there a plan for the director to convert our public transportation system into a hybrid or an electric uh, electrification of our public transportation because this actually is more efficient in getting down our pollution and also in operating. So we don't be over dependent on oil. For Capi, is there a plan for you to import uh, hybrid buses or fuel cell buses into the country? I haven't seen a lot of them. We don't know if there is any of this. Um. Ma mahirap pong pangunahan ng Department of Transportation. Right now, you're aware that the PUVMP does not have a preference for um, electric vehicle. It's just included in the menu that they can opt for. That you can participate as long as it's a Euro, 5, Euro 4 or higher vehicle or electric. Uh, what uh, Yusek Wimpy mentioned is that we're trying to push at least for the green routes, it's going to be exclusively electric. That's one. But the second is uh, we're also trying to get a program going wherein those uh, who would participate sa PUVMP for electric will put up also the charging station for them. Uh, preliminarily, we were saying it's a cheaper way to have the targeted assistance also for the drivers. Eh. As I mentioned to you, the cost uh, comparison for an ICE versus a pure battery electric vehicle is 50%. So effectively, if we're going to use uh, EVs uh, for the public transport sector, kung ang assistance nila is 6,000, parang 12,000 ang halaga nung natulong sa kanila. So yun yung con preliminary conversation sa amin. And while before I approached here, I was asking uh, Attorney Rice if there's an appetite for Kampi and its membership 
to do retrofits because that's one of the major sticking points for our public jeeps, di ba? They want to preserve the, the look. Eh, kailangan natin ng OEM palitan sana if that's going to be uh, possible. Um, that's something that we'd, we'd be open to discuss. Yeah, so uh, from the brand's perspective, in terms of bringing in uh, vehicles for commercial purposes, so we are studying that na actually some of our members are even looking at partnering with other businesses, as I mentioned earlier, like logistics companies or um, point of sale companies like Lazada, Shopee, and DHL, LBC to utilize their fleet uh, with electric or to use electric vehicles for their fleet. In terms of the four wheel uh, and the bigger trucks, uh, again, it's also a matter of cost as well as uh, the matter of whether how much because the Philippines, in terms of the roads and in terms of the infrastructure, dun tayo medyo nagkakaroon ng problem versus other jurisdictions because the roads here are more rough. Um, the infrastructure is not yet that ready for a plug-in or fully electric uh, vehicle, especially for buses or trucks. But yes, it's in the pipeline um, to answer that question. Okay. There's a question from the audience. Uh, it's asking for a friend. Okay. And I agree with this because part of our power infrastructure, only 24% is really renewable energy, but 22% is natural gas. The rest is actually coal and gas driven. Is there a way, is there a program DOE to you to, to uh, minimize the uh, dependence on what they call dirty energy? coal and gas, and switching to natural gas or to uh, renewable energy? I think that's uh, not particularly EV, uh, but I'll answer it first in an EV manner. Uh, under the KEVI, we've indicated that the goal for the electric vehicle charging stations by 2040, it's 100% powered by renewable energy. And the DOE, if it feels there's a need to issue additional programs to make that happen, we will. But to address the question, uh, under this administration, there has been, uh, wait, may salita, may gawa. I just have to say, te bago na ang Pilipinas. Okay. Under, under this administration, we have to be very clear. Uh, the president won on a campaign that showed a windmill. It's one of the major talking points. To back that up, uh, the president issued an executive order uh, designating DOE to be in charge of offshore wind. And Yusek uh, Wimpy mentioned already that our potential, based on the latest US NRL study, is more than seven times of our intact requirement. So that's the first plan, offshore wind. When we bring that in, that's going to be game changing. Second, we've increased the requirements for renewable portfolio standard. So, ibig pong sabihin, if dati 1%, he mentioned it's already at 2.51%, that's an incremental increase. It took us almost a decade to bring it to that level. Three, there's the Green Energy Auction Program, wherein we've been introducing a requirement for additional quotas for renewable energy at market prevailing prices. This is on top of the mechanisms already on feed-in tariff, uh, the re uh, sorry, oh, uh, feed-in tariff, plus we're really doubling down on getting the red tape at bay with the energy virtual one-stop shop or EVO system that we're now obligating, including LGUs, NCIP, and the rest of government to get all of the permits up and running because that's a major complaint of would-be investors. So under the EVOS, which is now backed also by the president, supported by ARTA, supported by the recent designed Green Lanes executive order, when you go to the DOE, especially for renewable energy, you will get the necessary attention for your pro projects to get fast track. We will hold your hand. We will get it from license hanggang execution because our goal is to reach the targets. Our target is to be more than 30% by 2030, and more than 50% renewable energy share by 2040. 
it's not going to happen without any game-changing moves on the part of the DOE. And that's what this administration is committed to do. So help us get there. There's a question about tariffs which we covered earlier. So there's already, it was already covered. Now uh, for Capri or uh, Adorni Rice, is it true that some car manufacturers like Toyota want to skip the electric car version in the long run and jump to using hydrogen powered vehicles precisely because of this carbon reduction issue? I can't speak to the individual strategies of each of the companies. I, I think at the end of the day, we need to address the concerns of the market. Because even if we shift to a different technology, that's then another education campaign that we need to run. We need to first educate the market on what the benefits are on how and how to use the properly use an electric vehicle or a, uh, electrified mobility vehicle or even an alternate alternative source alternative fuel vehicle so whether it's hydrogen whether it's battery electric or plug-in hybrid what's more important for the oems is market acceptance and education so i can't say i can't answer that unfortunately thank you very much okay i think this ends our session it's uh, 1 35 and i'd like to call uh, president wilson to Join this meeting and to do the black population tour for panelists. Thank you for thank you for coming meeting is adjourned.